I'm a Fedora fanboy. Now, this is a fairly recent development. I've been using Fedora now for two and a half months, and I've made several videos about Fedora during that time for, I think, good reasons, because I really like Fedora, and I like talking about Fedora, but I know that there are some people out there like, Matt, why are you always talking about Fedora? Like, it seems to be the only distro you cover now, and it's not true. I cover plenty of other distros, but I do make a lot of Fedora videos. And I wanted to talk a little bit about why Fedora has become so popular, not only with me, but with a lot of Linux YouTubers. I think that it all comes down to two things. The first is that Fedora is really good. Like, it is really good. It has been the best Linux experience that I've ever had on a computer, which is kind of saying something because I've had a lot of good experiences over the last five and a half years or so. It has been a solid distribution where I've had no updates break anything. I've had a good experience with the amount of software that I have access to. And when I can't find something in the repositories, I have access to either the uh, FlatHub or the COPR. And I've basically been able to find any software that I need, which is the biggest problem that, or the biggest problem I expected to have when I switched from Arch because I was leaving the AUR behind. So I think that the quality of or the amount of software that you have access to, the stability that it seems to offer. Like, I know that are, there are some people who have had problems with Fedora, but everyone has some problems with some distro. It just doesn't work with their hardware setup or something. And for me, at least, Fedora has been very, very stable. And I know it has been for a lot of other people as well. And on top of that is that they are for a lot of different spins and stuff like that now that have become increasingly popular. So if you don't like GNOME, you can use KDE or i3 or... Mate or whatever you want to use. So that choice is also something that didn't really exist a few years ago. While spins have been around for a while, there are more spins now and they are better maintained than ever before. So that's the first reason. Fedora is really good and you can add on top of that their really stellar support for Pipewire, which is not something you see in other distros, at least not yet. The really stellar support for Wayland because both of those projects are developed by projects leaders that are very closely related to Fedora. So you're going to get much more or at least better support on Fedora for those two things than you will on other distros, at least as of right now. And you get the fact that it's kind of splitting the middle between a rolling release and a static release. When you talk about rolling and static, you think of Arch Linux on one hand and like Debian or Ubuntu on the other. Whereas with Debian and Ubuntu, you're going to get really old packages, really old kernels and stuff like that. I mean, I'm talking about really old. I mean, older, you know what I mean? Like LTS versions of kernels. And that's the way those are things are, are meant to be used. You get new updates for your software when the distro releases. And it does release every six months or so. You do get updates for your software quite often. It's still going to be behind something like a rolling release like Arch, where it's on the complete bleeding edge. And of course, that comes with all the pitfalls of a rolling release as well, where you're kind of the guinea pig for everything that comes out. And you're going to experience much more in terms of bugs and stuff like that. And it's the reason why a lot of people consider Arch unstable. With Fedora, it sits in the middle. So it's not using as old a software as Ubuntu or Debian, you're going to get much newer software and more often, but you're not going to be using the latest, latest stuff immediately as it comes out and risk your system becoming unstable. So it kind of sits in the middle. It's kind of a rolling, rolling release. It's also kind of a static release. And that ability to split things in the middle and just kind of sit there means that your system is going to be further updated than Debian or Ubuntu but not as unstable as you might expect with Arch, which I think is a good thing and a lot of people really enjoy. So the second reason why I think Fedora has seen this increase in popularity is simply because a lot of people don't like Ubuntu anymore. Ubuntu used to be the most popular distribution, and I'm not talking about in terms of numbers. It's still the most popular in terms of numbers. But the reputation of Ubuntu and Canonical itself has gone down in recent years. Some of that is simply because Ubuntu has kind of become a little stale. I mean, if you're being honest with yourself, you probably think that the UI of Ubuntu hasn't changed in 10 years, and that's because it hasn't. It looks almost exactly the same. Yes, they've changed themes, but the pieces are all in the same spot. And 
while they've done some things to make it look better, and I do think that this last Ubuntu release was really good in terms of accent colors and being able to move the panel around, those things are really nice. The fact that the default is still the way it is, and they still have this really weird interest in giving you the oddest default wallpaper ever, it, it just kind of makes it feel like they haven't moved forward in a long time. And that perception, whether it's true or not, kind of impacts their reputation. Add on top of that, Canonical is not the most loved company in the world. Now, I know that Fedora is ran by Red Hat, and Red Hat is not a beloved company either, but it doesn't seem to be as maligned as Canonical is, for whatever reason. Now, it could be because Canonical seems to be very okay with working with Microsoft and Google when it comes to projects, things like Flutter and stuff like that. They don't seem to have a problem with working with larger big tech giants. Now, Fedora, and in this case Red Hat, on the other hand, they are obviously owned by IBM, which is also a big tech giant. But I don't know if this is just my perception, but IBM doesn't ever seem to be as evil as Google and Microsoft. Maybe it's just because we don't hear about them and they're more of an enterprise brand than Google and Apple and Microsoft are. So maybe that's probably just my perception, but the taint of IBM on Red Hat doesn't seem to be as bad as the taint of Google and Microsoft on Canonical, if that makes any sense at all. And of course, there are other reasons why Canonical gets a lot of crap. And one of those big reasons is snaps. I don't think that you can ignore snaps when you talk about the decreased popularity of Ubuntu. Snaps aren't good. I, I'm just going to put that out there. From a consumer's perspective, they're not a good product. They're slow. They have other issues when it comes to permissions and stuff like that that just don't exist on other types of packaging formats. And, you know, they have theming issues. And you just, you can go down the line and snaps just have all of these issues. The biggest one, of course, being speed, right? If you have the snap of Firefox and you launch it and it takes 45 seconds to load, that's not a great experience. But I think the worst part about this isn't that snaps are slow or snaps have all these other problems. It's the response that Canonical has had to these problems. Basically, they've looked at it, at least up until the Firefox debacle, as, nah, it's good enough. It's going to be okay. You know, don't worry about it. It's fine, right? Who cares if you have to wait an extra 20 seconds for your app to load? It doesn't matter. You know, we're using awesome compression software to compress these things and you have to uncompress it in order to run it. And that's the reason why it's slow. And that's just the way it's going to be. You know, they, they were very lackadaisical in their response to what a lot of people considered a huge problem. And that response has kind of changed with Firefox because they forced Firefox into a snap for everyone. And then when people complained that it was slow, they finally decided that they had to make some changes. Now, I still think the Firefox snap is really slow. It's not as slow as it used to be when it first came out as a snap, but it's still really slow. But at least they've at least now decided that they're going to do something to fix that load time. It took them so long, though. That lack of response and that lack of interest in making something better has severely cost their reputation. And it makes them feel, it makes it seem like they just don't care about the Linux desktop at all. And I think that that is the biggest thing when it comes to how Ubuntu is perceived. It feels like they don't care about the, the Linux desktop. And maybe for good reason. It makes them no money. All it is is a sinkhole. And, you know, they are an en enterprise company at the end of the day. The desktop just does not play as much of a role as it used to. Their consumer aspirations in terms of trying to get Ubuntu to into the hands of consumers is they're all dead. Like the Ubuntu phone is dead. All the con the convergence stuff is all just it's gone. So all of their focus now is on enterprise because that's what makes them money. So anything to do with the desktop feels like it's kind of lagging behind and it's like a it's a redhead stepchild or something like that where they just do not really care about it all that much and any effort that does get put into it is half-assed at best. And you probably ask, well, what does this have to do with Fedora? Well, as people have moved away from Ubuntu or have started to see Ubuntu in a slightly more negative light, they've been looking elsewhere for a different distro. And Fedora, has, because it is, as I said, very good and is well updated with not only the stuff that you'd expect, but also new features all the time and stuff like that, 
people have looked to Fedora, and that's the reason why it has become a little bit more popular over the last two years. Maybe not even a little bit more popular, a lot more popular, right? So I think that the, those two reasons are really the reason why Fedora has seen this surge in popularity, especially amongst the, the YouTuber population. Because a lot of the YouTuber, the Linux YouTubers out there, they don't like Ubuntu. A lot of them really don't. We have a lot of Debian guys out there that really like Debian. We have a lot of Fedora, a lot of a lot of Arch guys, right? But there's not a lot of Ubuntu Linux YouTubers out there. There's probably a couple that I don't know about or I don't watch all that much of. But for the mass, vast majority of the Linux YouTuber population out there, they're either using Fedora, Debian, or Arch. And because that's true, and because the reputation of Canonical and Ubuntu has kind of gone down so much amongst the, the YouTuber community, Ubuntu doesn't get the favorable coverage that it used to. Whereas Fedora has been seeing like one good release right after another, and it just continues to pro progress into a really good thing. Therefore, it gets more popularity and more coverage and more positive coverage than Ubuntu does. And I think that that's the reason why it has become so much more popular, especially amongst the YouTubers here. So at the end of the day, Fedora is still my favorite distro. Now I know that I have been made fun of a couple times because uh, people didn't think that I would stick with it. And that's something I'm going to hold over their head for a long time because I, I have stuck with it. Fedora is still my distro. It's on all of my computers and I'm very, still very, very happy with it. Like I, it's just a very, very good distro. And I'm glad that it's more popular than ever before. So if you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'm sure that the Ubuntu fans will hopefully crawl out of the, the woodwork and tell me exactly why Ubuntu is really good. I'd love to hear from you guys as well, because I'm sure that there are people out there that really like Ubuntu. I, it just feels like there's less of them be than before. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the LinuxCast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. The channel just would not be where it is today without you guys. So thank you for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.